Hello everyone and welcome to my video on scale diagrams. Scale diagrams, why do we care about them? We use scale diagrams in maps and navigation. And whenever we need to condense or expand information, we'll use these scale diagrams with scale factors. So if you ever use Google Maps, this for example is the directions to get from our school to Yankee Stadium. When you use Google Maps, there's a little key in the bottom. It's hard to see on this screen, but I'll blow it up a little bit. It'll say 2,000 feet is represented by this much distance. So you have an idea, if you're walking, for example, how far away it actually is. And it happens that if you click the little number, if you actually click the number in the corner, it'll change to metric. It'll change to meters, which is pretty convenient. All right, let's look at a typical regions question. The scale diagram questions are almost always part two questions because you have to draw pictures and stuff. So the first question is to determine the linear scale used in the diagram. Second question is to use a protractor to construct a scaled vector to represent the resultant of forces A and B and label the vector R. And then determine the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, that's a lot. Let's just focus on number one for now. When they say linear scale, it's the same as scale factor. They mean the same thing. So we want to know how much does one centimeter represent? How many newtons does one centimeter represent? So let's measure the length of one of the vectors using a protractor. And I know that this is not a protractor, but protractors are really hard to use with PowerPoint. All right. so. We bring our ruler or uh, protractor up and we measure one of the vectors. It doesn't matter which one we do, whichever one is nicer. And then we say five centimeters represents 20 newtons. And then we'll divide by that five because we want one centimeter. How much is one centimeter? Well, if five centimeters is 20 newtons, then one centimeter would represent four newtons. So the steps for this are to measure one of the vectors. Again, it shouldn't matter which one. We should get the same answer either way. Write an equation with your measurement and then divide both sides by the number of centimeters. So I'm going to back up and just do this again. We bring in our protractor or ruler. We measure in centimeters. Then we say how much that represents. So that represented 20 newtons. 5 centimeters represents 20 newtons, and then we divide both sides by that number 5, the number of centimeters we measured. And we write our scale factor as 1 centimeter represents this many newtons. In this problem it's newtons, in other problems it'll be kilometers, or velocity, or whatever. Okay? 2. Use a protractor to construct a scaled vector to represent the resultant of forces A and B label the vector r. So the word I want to highlight here is the resultant. And the method we're going to use to construct the resultant is to create a parallelogram. So to do this, we just have to kind of measure both of these vectors in centimeters and then slide them up. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's the 32 newtons is actually exactly 8 centimeters. Then we slide it over to where b is. Then we do the same thing with the 20 newton vector. We measure it, we measured it before as five centimeters, and we slide it up to create a parallelogram. And after we create the parallelogram, it's easy peasy, we just have to connect the diagonal. So starting from point P, the point where both of the vectors are originating from, we draw another vector that ends where both of the other ones do. So we connect that diagonal and we label it with resultant or R. Either way, resultant, that is our vector. So again, we measure eight centimeters, slide it over, measure five centimeters, slide it over, and we connect the diagonal. That is how we create the resultant every single time. If you have to draw the resultant, this is the method we can use, the parallelogram method. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we can actually measure it, and 
this animation is really slow, trying to build up the suspense. You can do it faster on the exam, that is okay. Uh, but when we do finally reach it, we measure from point P to where the vector ends, and that looks about 7 centimeters. I didn't write it, but that's about 7 centimeters. If we look from P to the end, 7 centimeters. So this helps us with the last part, determining the magnitude of the resultant force. Use our answers from the previous two questions. So if one centimeter represents four newtons, and we just measured the resultant force as seven centimeters, then we can just multiply seven by the scale factor. And that's why the scale factor is so useful. If we know how much one centimeter is, or how much one centimeter represents, then we can find any other amount, any other length. So seven centimeters, all we have to do is multiply by our scale factor. Since our scale factor is four, we multiply seven by four, and we get 28 newtons. And then we conclude the magnitude of the resultant force is 28 newtons. Okay, so that was just one quick problem. Uh, I recommend using the regions exams that you can find online and their solutions to practice more. And a hint for this is to use the button, the buttons, control F, hold control and then push F, and you can type in the word that you're looking for. So if you want to practice scale factor, you can type in the word scale, and usually you'll find a problem. Same thing if you want to practice modern physics, you can type in like baryon or something, and it will find the problems for you. That's it for now. See you next time.